as I've said and Sherry said, we're in this message called Traveling Light, and we've opened God's Word together, and I know it's not a traditional Christmas series, if you will, uh, but I think it's been good for our church. Uh, I think the messages are messages that have resounded. The, the messages are messages that God's just kind of preaching to me as I'm preparing them week after week after week. Uh, and uh, it's just been so good for me, and I feel like for so many of you, um, like I said a moment ago, I really feel like some of the things are resounding with some of our church family. Uh, and if you remember going back to week one, we talked about getting rid of physical stuff and that one-handed living is better than two-handed living because if we're only living with one handful, then we always have a hand to reach out to our friend or our neighbor and to help one another. And we talked about the fact that our calling is too great, our life is too good, our God is too great to let those things go by. And then in week two, we talked about distractions and letting go of them and how they, in, this, in a room this size, we have many, many, many distractions Many things that keep us from focusing on the Word of God, from focusing on what God's doing in our lives. And then last week we talked about bitterness. And i got to be honest with you, it's probably one of the hardest ones we've talked about up to this point. Uh, It's one of those that as I was preaching it, I was like, okay God, as I was studying for it, I was like, okay God, you're talking to me. Why are you having me preach this message? Uh, Because... It's something that I think we all deal with to some level. And then as we've continued along, today I want us to take a look at Luke chapter 1. And I want, us to, uh, I want to speak about letting go of control. I want to share with you what the Lord's laid on my heart this week, just about letting go of control and that emotion that we have of, of holding on, holding on to stuff, holding on to the, the control. If you're tempted to reach over and lift the hand of the person next to you when I ask the question, are we dealing with letting go of control? Chances are we're all dealing with that at some level. So don't look at the person next to you, to your left or to your right, and say it's you that has this problem. We probably all have this problem to some degree or another. If you have your Bibles, and I hope you do, I'd ask you to open to Luke chapter 1. We're going to begin reading in verse 26 in just a few moments. And we're going to read the story of the foretelling of the birth of Jesus. And I want us to focus on a couple of things, and I'll point those out as we're walking through this passage of Scripture. But we're going to see that Mary really had to let go of control. You know, she was getting ready to be married. She had all these plans made. And then all of a sudden this angel appears to her and says, Hey, you're going to be giving birth to a a holy son, the Son of God. And she didn't run from that idea. She didn't say no. She didn't refuse the opportunity. In fact, she was honored at the opportunity. And so if you have your copy of God's Word, I want us to read, beginning in verse 26 of Luke chapter 1. It says this, In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. For you have found favor with God. I don't know about you, but if an angel appeared to me and said something like that and then said, do not be afraid, I would say, you're crazy. I'm afraid. I don't know what's happening. He says, do not be afraid. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I'm a virgin? And the angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for, with her, who was called barren. Verse 37, For nothing will be impossible with God. 
And I want you to notice what Mary says in verse 38. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Would you pray with me this morning? God, I thank you so much for today. I thank you for allowing us to gather in this room and to worship you. God, I thank you for the forgiveness that you have shown to us by sending your son, your one and only son, Jesus, to this earth. God, the reason that we celebrate the season that we're in right now is the birth of Jesus, your son, who eventually went on to die on the cross as a substitute for my sin and the sins of the world, God, so that we could spend eternity with you. Now, God, speak to us today as we look into your word. It's in your gracious and holy name we pray. Amen. So Mary was trying to think what the angel could mean when he came to her. And so the scripture says that she was troubled. Now, I would probably be troubled had the angel come to me as well. I think back to when Amy and I were dating. If an angel had appeared to Amy and told her that she was going to have a baby, I was serving as a youth pastor. What would that have looked like at the church? It wouldn't have been good. And I would have been troubled. And I would have been asking, what in the world is going on? Some of you right now, as we're gathered together, you may be troubled about something in your life. You may be thinking, I never thought that I would experience this. You're troubled. You may be thinking that you can't handle whatever it is that you're going through. You don't know what you're going to do. You may be wanting to take control and figure it out. That's our natural inclination is to take hold of the situations. Take control of the situations. Mary was troubled and so are we. Notice Mary did not respond with negativity. She didn't start saying things like, this was not in my five-year plan Or, now I'm going to be pregnant in my wedding dress. No, she responded by saying, I am the servant of the Most High God. Let it be. You see, Mary could have refused. She could have been angry. She could have been sad. But instead, she said, let it be. The scripture says that she's troubled. Then the angel speaks and she responded, let it be. Now, I'm no mind reader. But I can already tell you that there are some of you thinking that this is the perfect message for your spouse. Letting go of control, this is the perfect message for your spouse. Maybe your in-laws are here with you today and you're thinking, I'm glad they're across the room because they need to hear this message today. Maybe you're saying, I'm so glad that this person or that person is here and that they're going to hear this message You may be even thinking to yourself that I don't have a problem with control. I'm not controlling. I'm just aggressively helpful. I'm just thoroughly organized. Whatever it may be in your world that you want to come up with to make it not seem so bad as to say that you're controlling, I'll let you have that. But whatever those terms are that you use, I want you to know that they all mean the same thing. And this morning, I want us to see how we can respond like Mary with let it be. Let it be. You see, we and our world today, we want to control everything. Our kids know that. If you want to control what they look like, where they go, who they hang out with, what they do, what they make on the ACT, where they go to college, who they hang out with, what they do who they're going to marry even, how many kids they're going to have, how they're going to take care of you when you're old. You want to control all of the things. Many of you in this room have adult children, and you're still trying to hold on. You're still trying to have some sort of control in the lives of your children. We all have those issues. We all have problems with that. Some of us really want to control what people think of us. Social media is a great weapon that we have in this. You see, we get to show the life that we want out there. The filtered life. 
the life that we want people to see. If you're like us, it took 37 attempts in front of the Christmas tree to get one family photo, and it still didn't look like what we wanted it to. We had opportunities that we had planned pictures with Santa Claus, and they didn't work out because somebody was sick or something was going on. Somebody was pitching a fit. But the Christmas card that you got from us, you would have never known that. It looked like the perfect little family. Although yesterday we finally stopped by Bass Pro Shop on the way home. We didn't have reservations. We walked into the Santa Wonderland. The guy told us, there's no reservations left. You can't have a picture with Santa. My wife, is, took control. She pulled it up on her phone, and it was 4.10, and there was a reservation at 4.30. We finally got our Santa picture yesterday. Was it perfect? No, Avery was crying. I don't want a picture with Santa. But we took control, and we made her do it. Friends, we have things in our life that we want to be a part of, that we want to happen, and sometimes it just doesn't work out. Sometimes we just need to say, let it be. You see, it's funny because the more we try to control things, the, fear, the, the more we fear losing control. The more in control that we try to be, the more fear that takes over us, and we have this fear of losing control. And the more fear that we have in losing control, then the more control that we want to have. And that's why today that what I want to do is give you just one thought. One big idea. If you're taking notes today, this is it. This is the one thing that I want you to get. The big thought is this. We don't always have the power to control, but we always have the power to surrender. We don't always have the power to control. Sometimes the circumstances are out of our control. But we can always surrender. You see, we may not have the power to, we, we may make him do what he, what, what, we, we might not have the power to make him do what we want him to do or make her behave like you want her to behave or to get your marriage where you want it to be or to get your finances where they need to be, to get your future like you want it to be, to get your health where you want it to be, to have your kids do everything you want them to do. We may not have the control to do that. We may not have the power to do that. When we talk about this, the angel appears to the Virgin Mary. A lot of people hear this and think, well, it was easy for her. She was Mary. After all, there's statues named after her. There's cathedrals named after her. She was the Virgin Mary. But I want you to understand that the angel appeared to her. We have to recognize that she was just an ordinary, everyday, average teenage girl. Just a regular kid like any of the people sitting in this room. Some scholars say that she may have been as, as young as 13 or 14. Most scholars believe it was around the age of 15 that Mary heard the news that she was going to give birth to a son. You see, she had hopes and dreams like any other girl. She was dreaming of getting married. She had hopes that and she had dreams, and the angel comes to her and says, No, 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 God has something different for you. I resound with that a little bit, as when I was in college, I had dreams and plans. I, wanted to, I was in the band. I wanted to go to Alabama and play in the Million Dollar Band. And all of a sudden, God came to me one day, and he said, I want you to do ministry. I don't want you to do that. I want you to do what I want you to do. And you've heard my story. I ran from that call for quite some time. I I didn't do bad things, but I just didn't surrender to that call. I tried to control what was happening rather than surrendering to what God called me to do. The angel said, no, God has something different for you. The scripture tells us then that Mary was troubled. Some of us kind of have a plan, some hopes and dreams. You're done at two kids and you got a bonus child. Some hopes and dreams, you didn't see that coming. Or the opposite, maybe you had the hopes of three kids and you found out that you couldn't conceive the first one and you were troubled. You thought that the job was the perfect job when you took it. You had no idea that the company was going to be downsizing and eventually you would lose your job. 
You had no idea that uh, life wasn't going to happen the way that you thought it was. You had no idea that there were going to be relational issues. Your marriage isn't where it's supposed to be. There could be an empty chair at the Christmas table this year that hasn't been there. The, there was the, the person who was there last year, and for whatever reason, that person's not there this year. Maybe it's a health issue. Maybe it's a financial weight. It could be a number of things that you're troubled about. And you didn't think that it would be this way. Like she didn't know that three decades later, Jesus would be on the cross and he would die for the sins of the world and God would raise him from the dead and all of the angels would sing and he would ascend up to heaven and he would be seated at the right hand of the Father. Mary didn't know that that would happen when she gave birth to Jesus. She didn't know that and you don't know what's going to happen in your situation. She had to make a choice. Mary had to make a choice. We don't always have the power to control, but we do always have the power to surrender. You see, she had to make a choice between her dreams and God's destiny. She had to make a decision between her plans and what appeared to be God's purpose for her life. She had to choose between her control and God's calling. And what I love about Mary is this. Even though she didn't understand what was happening, even though she didn't understand the plan, she was trusting that her father had a purpose for her life. Even though she didn't get it. Friends, God's doing something. He may be doing something in your life. We always have the power to surrender to what he's calling us to. But we don't always have the power to control what we want. What's interesting to me, what I think about, is there's no such thing as what I call partial surrender. We either surrender to Jesus like I give it all up, I give it to you, or we are not. It's like the old song, I surrender all. In that song, we sing, I surrender all, not I surrender some. Friends, we don't have the power to surrender some. We have to surrender all. There's no degree of surrender like I'm 87.5% surrendered. Or like we trust in Him to save our soul, but I still want to do my own thing. Or I trust in Him to make my past okay, but I can't trust Him with my money. Or I trust Him to give me peace when I'm hurting, but not with my kids. There's no such thing as partial surrender. Mary didn't say, well, I might be willing to give birth to the son. She didn't say, well, if it fits into my plan, I'll do it. She fully surrendered and she said, let it be, for I am the chosen child, servant of the most high God. Friends, this morning, I want to ask you, what is our desire to control rooted in? There has to be some desire that that control is rooted in. What is your desire to control rooted in this morning? When I look at all the different areas of my life to control, and believe me, like I told you at the beginning, I'm preaching to me in this moment. We have to be honest and say that our desire is in to control is rooted in a lack of faith. It's rooted in a lack of faith to say that Jesus can do it. But we want to hold on. The more I find myself trying to control, the more I overestimate my ability to control. The more I underestimate the power of the goodness of God. You see, it's not easy, as I told you, because everything in culture tells us that you've got to make it happen. It's going to be, if, if it's going to be, it's up to us. I've got to get in there. I've got to be opposed to everything that culture says. Because Jesus says this, if you cling to your life, in other words, if you try to be in control, you're actually going to lose it. But if instead we give up our life, if we surrender it, Jesus says that we will find it. In other words, to fully follow Jesus is to surrender control. To be like Mary, to say, let it be. The interesting thing is this, surrendering control is not just a one-time decision. I don't just say, all right, God, I'm going to surrender control, and now everything's in His power. 
It's a decision that I have to make day after day after day. It's a decision that we have to make month after month after month, year after year after year. And when we, took, when we look at Mary's surrender, what's so interesting is that every time she chose to surrender something, she eventually saw evidence of the faithfulness of God. Watch again and again. Think about, you're a virgin and you're going to be pregnant. I'll be honest, like I said, if it was when Amy and I were dating, I would have had some problems. I would have been troubled like she was. And what does God do? She doesn't know he's going to do it. But God sends Abriel, Gabriel, the angel who appears in a dream to Joseph and says this whole thing is legit. She surrenders. She sees the faithfulness of God. People around town were whispering. She, she was shamed for this. And, and then what happens? The Holy Spirit confirms it to her relative Elizabeth. This is of God and there's some comfort there. You just think about all the different times that Jesus is missing at the age of 12. They were panicking and where did they find him? They found him in the temple teaching adults. When Mary was pregnant and she was ready to give birth, she's nine months pregnant riding on a donkey. They didn't go into the town and find a Holiday Inn or a Motel 6. There were no rooms in the inn. It was not the ideal situation, but she trusted God anyway. And he provided a stall next to farm animals. Not the ideal situation. Shepherds show up to worship. Oh yeah, God is with us. Herod the king then gets word. Who is this baby? He says. We've got to make sure that he's not, he doesn't live. Think about this. The king and all the forces want your baby to be dead. Every day, Mary, God, I trust you with my child. Surrender, faithfulness. Fast forward, Jesus knows what's going to happen to him. He's the son of God. He's in the garden of Gethsemane and he's agonizing, knowing what's about to happen. The pressure is so intense. If you look at it scientifically, the capillary uh, gland busts and he has blood coming out of his brow. That's how intense it was in this moment. He cries out to his father. He says, Father, if there is any other way that you could remove this cup. What he's talking about is the cup of suffering that's coming. Remove it, he says. Then what he says is the exact same Greek word that his mother said when the angel came to her and told her that she was going to give birth to Jesus. When she said, let it be. He said the same thing. Let it be your will, God, and not mine. And then he goes to the cross and his mother Mary looks at him on the cross. You need to understand this. He had been beaten so badly that he didn't even look like a human being. And a mother seeing her son that way, she surrendered and she saw his faithfulness. Scripture says in 1 Peter 5, 7, to cast all of your anxieties and your troubles on him because he cares for you. Friends, what's so special about the story of Mary is this. The angel appears to her and what did the angel say? The angel said, the Lord is with you. He's with you. Who is Jesus? He's called Emmanuel, which means God with us. And I hope you feel that today, that God is with us. I want to close by saying this. I want to explain the best way that I can. I told you earlier that it's such an honor to serve you. We love you. We, we, are, we, are, we don't take for granted the, the, the responsibility that we have to serve in this capacity. And that's all true. But there's also a spiritual responsibility. There's a spiritual responsibility that I have as a pastor, that I have as a father, that I have as a husband, that you also have as children of God. You see, our staff and our families care about you, but so does God. But here's what I realized in preaching this message. I cannot control you. I have a spiritual responsibility to stand here and to preach the gospel week after week after week. To tell you about the birth of Jesus. To tell you about what he did on the cross so that we could have eternal life. But as I was preparing to preach this message, I realized that I cannot control what you do, the choices that you make, the decisions that you make. 
And I would love to say that I could talk you into something. I could preach in a powerful way that would help you say yes to surrendering to God. Because when you surrender, here's the promise. Is that God can do way more through our surrender than we could ever do through our control. He can do more. That which is on our heart is always better in His hands. The things that we're troubled about, the things that we're trying to control, is always better in the hands of our loving Father. But as your pastor, I cannot control the decisions that you make. I cannot make it happen. I cannot make you surrender to Jesus. Only the work of the Holy Spirit can do this. Only the work of the Holy Spirit can cause you to want to surrender. I've told you today what I felt like the Lord had laid on my heart. I have a control problem. And I think if we were all honest, we all have a control problem. We all want to control aspects of our life. But friends, God can do so much more with our surrender than we could ever do with our control. You see, we don't always have the power to control, but we do have the power to surrender. And like I said, God can do more with our surrender than with our control. Would you pray with me this morning? God, I thank you so much for allowing us to gather in your house today and to worship you. God, I thank you that we've, God, had the table set before us, God, this idea of surrender. This idea that we need to be surrendered to you. And friend, I want you to know that if you're in this room today, I get it. You've got the problem because I've got it too. But what I know is that God is calling us to lay it down before Him. God's calling us to surrender it to Him. And I promise you, when we do, life will get lighter. The load will be lighter because we'll be trusting Jesus. Will we say like Mary, Lord, let it be. God, I'm going to do the best I can to raise my children, but I'm surrendering to you what the outcome will be. Lord, I'm going to be the best employee that I can be, but if the company downsizes and decides to lay me off, God, I'm surrendered to you and I trust that you will do what's best. God, if I go to the doctor this week and I get a diagnosis that I'm not sure about, God, I'll lay it before your feet and I'll surrender it to you because you know what's best. Friend, when we can try to control things, we just run a rat race, running around in circles. But when we truly surrender to God, God moves in a mighty, mighty way that we could never imagine or think of. Remember, God tells us in 1 Peter to cast all of our cares, our anxieties on Him. He'll never leave us nor forsake us. Friend, God wants us to surrender to Him. Will you do that today? Will you be like the Virgin Mary when the angel came to her and told her that she was going to give birth to a son? Will you say, I am a servant of the Most High God. Let it be. When those situations arise, when work doesn't go like it's supposed to, or our health doesn't go like it's supposed to, when we get the bill that we don't know how we're going to pay it, will we surrender control to God? I'm not here to say that God's just going to lay money on the table either. I don't want you to misunderstand me. But God will make every situation good for His glory. So friend, how will we respond to Him today? As we celebrate Him this Christmas, we celebrate His birth, will we respond by surrendering? God, thank You so much for allowing us to gather in this room today. It's in Your gracious and loving heavenly name we pray today.